Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and in my series of talking to self-employed agents and their journey, I'm with Sam Funnell from Fine and Country in Rugby. Hi, Sam. Thanks Hi, for joining Chris. me today. I would like to ask you your story as an estate agent and why you turned from being an employed agent to a self-employed agent. Your fears, your frustrations, your hopes, your dreams, what you'd do differently so you, we can teach the world of UK estate agency and lettings whether self-employed is for them or not. Because it, is it for everyone? No, I, th I guess it's not, Chris. I think. Um, I mean, how long have you been self-employed now? I I've only been self-employed remarkably since June two thousand and nineteen. So um, six, six, so six, just seven over months, seven months. Um, but um, you know, I've seen my earnings and income increase dramatically during that period, um, combined with the earning potential. Um, you know, I've followed a lot of systems and procedures. Um, a lot of that is centered around video, of course, uh, which has enabled me to, as an agent of 23 years, have plenty of people coming to talk to me. And, and uh, So you've built yourself up a great name in rugby. You've worked for independents, you've worked for corporates. When did you join the Sean Newman gang? Yeah, I joined Sean uh, to work for Newman's in 2001. Okay. Um, had a brief sabbatical elsewhere, setting up another estate agency in the town. Okay. That went a bit pear-shaped in the uh, global financial crisis. Oh, wait, um, I yep. uh, was welcomed back into the fold, but under the fine and country brand in 2011. Okay. But that wasn't self-employed, was it? No, it was employed. Um, what was your job at that point then? I was a branch manager of fine and country rugby, yeah. So you were running the show, going out valuing as well? Yep. Okay? Yep, pretty much. Is that the best part of the job? Uh, no, um, listing houses is lovely and it becomes part and parcel of the daily grind, but I still enjoy being at the back end of it as well and selling stuff. Strange. Yeah, I know. Great. I do, I do. I love Because most valuers love getting on the market and then they leave it to everyone else to sell it. No, I like to be at each end of that process at the moment. Okay. And that's, that's where I like to be. Is that, is that the best part of the job? From Yeah, from dealing with a sale from the day it's listed or the day you value it, to the listing, to the next part of that process, to the completion is, yeah, it's the cherry on the icing on the cake, isn't it, at the end of the day. But hold on a second, this Newman's Fine and Country in this part of the world is famous for the self-employed model. You must have been one of the only, apart from the admin staff, employed agents in a, in a sea of self-employed agents. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think at some point, probably through this fear of that global financial crisis that we had in 2008 through to uh, 2009 and 10. Because that did that burn your fingers? It did, yeah. It really caught me in a way. And um, I became a bit risk averse in a way. Uh, I wanted to just ensure for my family that I had some, if you like, comfortable in the knowledge that I was getting X amount every month. Mm. Did but you ever toy with the idea in... 14, 15, did. 16. Yeah, did. Um, yeah, I, I think there were uh, occasions where other offices were adopting the model. Rugby still had a couple of people that were employed and then self-employed. Um, and in a sense, I began to feel like a bit of a dinosaur because I could see what the earning capacity was and the freedom that, that was associated with some of those working hours as well. Um, and at some point, and, I, and I'd always become, um, don't mind me saying it, a, a, a reasonable lister who was making quite a lot of money over that period of time. Um, and it was whether it was worth taking that jump into, into a little bit of the unknown. Um, but it did come, become very apparent to me in the early part of 2018, sorry, 2019, that there was an opportunity that... I couldn't resist. Yeah, that was it. What What were your biggest fears, both yourself and your family? The biggest fear, I think, was that understanding that if you had three house sales all fall apart in one day, you know that that's the one that could could clearly uh, put you in a financial um, nightmare. But I couldn't be able to realise, look, you're in control of your own destiny. You can sort this. You can do this. 
you know, where there's a cell that falls through, there's another one that's tied up. It's consistency. Um, and I've always been very consistent. Um, and I think I've always followed systems. I've always followed processes. Um, you know, I've been with Sean on and off since 2001. Um, and, uh, you still here? I'm still here, yeah. And that's not bad for some people who work for Sean Newman. <laughs> Sean, I'm only joking. But like, you know, in reality, it, you know, Sean rubs off on a lot of his team. Um, and it's, it's constant. And if you're doing things constantly and consistently, it pays dividends. And I thought, well, this is going to be easy to transfer from an employed individual to a self-employed, as long as I continue doing what I'm doing. Um, following the systems. Following the systems. But, but at the same time, I'm also um, opening up opportunities where I can work when I want. And sometimes I am working at night time, responding to portal leads or stuff that's coming in. And do you know what? When I respond to one of those, and a client's at the other end of an email, they go, wow. That's amazing. That's great, thanks. Okay, but what did your wife think about all this? I think I've probably been boring her for about a year and a half uh, talking about it. I mean, you know, she just just get on with it. So, yeah. Yeah, just get on with it. You had mortgage to pay? Yeah, that. yeah, mortgage, two children, um, and uh, yeah, various bits. But uh, yeah, I think I think there was enough of a, a pipeline in a sense as well that I've got that enabled that to be a bit more comfortable as well. And how have you changed in those since you moved over? Was it was it a gradual change? Because my biggest fear at the moment is someone works for a corporate on a Friday, and open, and then becomes a self-employed agent on a Monday. And I've seen a, a list. I've seen lists and lists of agents who joined self-employed agency mm. three months later are back in because they haven't put the work in. Um, personally, I don't think I changed. I, I, I was the right mentality and the right person to do it anyway. Um, it just meant for me it was an easier transition to do that. I've probably become more aware of my listings that need attention, and therefore you know I'm responsible. You know, there's in rugby, there's fine and country boards all over the town, but on it there's a picture of me as well and my telephone number and my mobile. I walk past them every day or drive past them every day, and I feel utterly responsible for that. That's my for sale sign, really. You know, that's my listing okay. under the Fine Country banner. Does it keep you up at night? You know, you're not gonna that there's not a, a, a guaranteed wage coming in. No, no, no. I'm I'm very comfortable with, with that now. Do you wish you'd have done it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In hindsight, okay. I, I really wish I'd done it before. You know, a long okay. time ago. And if you don't mind me saying, what did you took? You know. What sort of numbers are we talking here? Yeah, 2019. Um, I mean, obviously some of that was employed. Some of it was, um, but the vast majority, I exchanged contracts on um, fees totaling 470,000 in a year. That's the whole office or just you? No, that's just me. Yeah. yeah. So it's properties you've listed. Yeah, I've listed um, and a large majority of which I've sold as well. Because if someone else, in your, your model is, if someone else sells it, they get a little bit of cut. They can get a little cut on that, yeah. yeah. Are you happier? Because um, uh, one thing I'm learning is, it's not, the money helps, but it it's not everything. No. No, it's not. And I think, if I'm honest, you, you if you work in an environment like I do, the self-employed model still needs some element of a team in there, and um, you know, behind me, for example, I've got a great marketing manager who looks after a lot of our you know, social you've got media. to give almost a ballpark fifty percent of your fee away. Is it? You know, that that's that must be quite galling. Although then you were only getting say ten percent and a salary before, so yeah. But now was the right time to do it. I think you know, I knew that. What was interesting about last year's property market is a lot of my competitors down the street were moaning and grumbling about what, what was going on. And I was thinking, no, this is not happening. We're obviously doing something very different, but Final Country Rugby has done its best figures since it opened the doors in I'm, 2001. I'm, I'm, 
What does Sean bring to the party? Um, I think a reinforcement of, of self belief, which you know he's always had, um, and he has systems and procedures, as I said, that again are reinforced regularly, that ensures that you know he, he will get results. You know he's after the results as we are. So he's in a partnership. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to think he, he, he would listen to what we've got to say as much as we will hear, sometimes. Um, what would you change? Oh, good question. Um, about, about the office or about... The model? The model? The, the model? Sean, the Sean model. Um, at this particular moment in time, given the results I've had, no, I'm, I'm, I'm more than content with the model. And do you think it is for everyone? No. I mean, what would you say to the a corporate valuer who is, you know, working for one of the corporates, basic of say twenty five, pulling in another fifteen grand in fee, you know, yeah. cars. So they're probably on a sixty, fifty, sixty grand bone uh, package. Yeah. But but probably haven't generated one valuation in the last two years. Because you've got to bring your own business in, haven't you? You have to. You have to bring your own business in. That's my biggest fear of, of people yeah. jumping ship and coming to this this game. I have seen um, far too many estate agents um, working in our, in our industry that um, are, are, are order takers, frankly. You know, the, the lead comes in, that's that's what you do with it. Um, the self-employed models are not for everybody. You've got to work hard. You have to work on your personal brand. You have to work on delivering some content as you well know. Well, you just mentioned now that content has been an important factor for you getting that business. Just so you can finally help the guys and girls out there in estate agency land, what does your content marketing look like that's enabled you to get those sort of fees? Sure. Um, I produce a market update video once a month, every month, and I've done that consistently for 14 months. Um, just literally recorded one 24 Very hours ago. Very good, saying. Thank you. Thank and you. And I mean that. I learned it all from you. <laughs> and and it ultimately um, what I do with that content is that goes on a personal blog um, called, called the Rugby Luxury Property Expert I then uh, email that to our database for market appraisals that we've had in the last four or five years um, and those people uh, are able to, to read that uh, see it on a podcast, see it on a video uh, and ultimately digest that content. Uh, they don't have to, but clearly they do because I'm getting people coming back to me on properties that I valued 18 months ago who you know, want to talk again about putting their house on the market. And uh, my videos are my way of prospecting without spending an entire day attached to a telephone. And from my point of view, that reaches far more people and has far more effect for that to happen. Every listing we put on the market has a property video. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that when I do attend some market appraisals, like I did the other week, the chap said, oh, I know you, I've seen your videos. Um, they feel like they already know you, don't they? Yeah, it's phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, and how did you get over that fear of doing the video? <laughs> yeah, I always remember the first one. And the first one I did was on a 1.75 million manor house um, in Northamptonshire and this had got to be right it was if I messed it up you know I felt I was failing this massive property with a great big fee and um, it went really well um, I looked a bit stiff I looked a bit you know and I remember looking back at it and thinking yeah I could do this I could do that but then I thought I do this every day I look at people I talk to people I use hand gestures, I use this, and, and just be yourself. You just be yourself. Um, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, it thankfully works. Any other media like podcasts and printed work? Uh, no, not enough. I probably need to do a bit more on the podcast front. Okay, so at least you've got a podcast. Yeah, that's good. Um, and that goes out regularly. Um, you know, our social media channels um, in rugby are brilliant. You know, we've got a great girl called Claire who looks after all our social media. Um, uh, and she's consistently uh, delivering a product for people to digest. So, you know, for me, it's great. 
and the f well, and final question: What does the twenty uh, twenties mean mean for you? What are you going to do? Yeah, um, you know, off the back of a very good year, I want to improve upon that. And uh, you know, the market share that our office has got uh, has put us at the very forefront of being the uh, top premium market agent in the area. And we want to continue that and increase that. For me personally, um, there's lots more to do. Um, I think there's lots more to do on, on the content video in terms of stuff that people want to be interested in. Um, the hardest bit is finding the time. Mm. And that is the, the bit. And I, I've watched Sean more, more recently manage his time very effectively by recording 30 videos in one day yeah. and then delivering them over the content of a month. I think that's the next thing we want to all look at. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for your time today. No problem, Chris. Thanks. Thanks.